Rapongi Crossing 2013, Out of Doubt. Introduction Since the Great East Japan Earthquake of 2011, the people of Japan have begun to cast doubting eyes on both the systems of their society and the media that provides their information. This year we celebrate the fourth Rapongi Crossing exhibition. And take a close look at what sort of productive discussion has arisen from the doubt that can now be found in modern Japan. The title, Out of Doubt, refers not only to those things born from doubt, but also to the idea of removing doubt and moving towards a brighter time. The words themselves carry multifaceted meanings, and the artists chosen for this exhibition were chosen to bring multifaceted perspectives. The works include allusions to governmental and social issues, nonsensical actions as forms of contemporary criticism, the relationship between humans and nature, and actions themselves as art. By taking a look at modern art as it is right now, we hope to, at the same time, gain an image of what it will be in the future. If you'd like to hear instructions on how to use the audio guide today, please press the I button. Kazama Sachiko, Prison Nuke Fission 235. Spheres fly around a soaring tower as a nuclear explosion goes off in the air. The idea for this woodblock print comes from a popular Japanese comic book series from the 1980s called Kin Nikuman. The evil supervillain Sunshine has transformed into the building holding the government's Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry. As a part of his lethal plan to crush his opponents. In the foreground, we see the pre World War II building that housed the Home Ministry, and to the left and right, we see the present day National Parliament buildings and Metropolitan Police headquarters, respectively. The head within the central atomic nucleus is that of the 34th U.S. President, Dwight D. Eisenhower, who gave a speech called Atoms for Peace. The six electrons flying about. Mainly show the Home Ministry top bureaucrats and politicians responsible for introducing nuclear power to post war Japan. Artist Kazama Sachiko is an artist known for looking at the world from a modern perspective while weaving political and historical themes into her work. She uses woodblock print techniques to create her work, a method that allows for a great number of duplicates to be made, but she only prints one copy of each piece. Entangled in the same work, we find commentary on Japan's post war energy policies and the history of the relationship between Japan and the U.S. Akasegawa Genpei, Sakura Illustrated, 1971, Sandi Zuka Edition. From August 1970 to March 1971, a manga series called Sakura Illustrated was published in the Asahi Journal. Parts of the Sakura Illustrated series are on display in the center of this display space, but the work you are looking at right now is 1971's Sakura Illustrated Sandi Zuka edition. It was made as a poster for a music concert held in an area called Sandi Zuka. The group hosting the concert was protesting the construction of Narita International Airport during a series of escalating incidents known as the Sandi Zuka War. On the body of the aircraft are the words celebrating the first Sandi Zuka aircraft, and below that are the names of the contemporary prime minister and governor of Chiba Prefecture, where Narita was to be built. Behind the aircraft, fiery bottles plunge towards the overlapping police riot shields, symbolizing the fierce clashes between police and demonstrators. The series took an acutely ironic look at society. Using uniquely humorous, critical perspectives through various media, and was the work of Akasegawa Genpei, an artist always embroiled in controversy. A great variety of other types of parody and wordplay were used in the series. In regards to the actual publication, the Asahi Journal, Akasegawa said that the Sakura Gaho was the real newspaper, and the magazine like content around it simply served as the wrapping. His comment made it seem as if his work had taken control of that major magazine, and also serves to reflect the feel of the era itself when the airplanes took over. Nakamura Hiroshi, 
Island, the base. A deep limestone cavern extends from the foreground far into the distance in this image. In Okinawa, this type of cave is known as a gama. Near the end of World War II, Okinawa was the site of the largest land battles ever to be waged on Japanese soil, and after the American landings, many of the island residents fled to caves like this and committed suicide. The black, shadowy forms in the foreground represent those who took their own lives. Let's take a look at another work on display on the wall on your right. The next piece, titled The Base, drew inspiration from a 1957 event known as the Girard Incident in Japan. A U.S. soldier shot and killed a Japanese woman, collecting spent shell casings and other metal scrap at a U.S. shooting range in Somagahara, Guma Prefecture. Although it was first deemed an accident, later testimony showed that it was possibly intentional, and outcry arose across the country. From the giant face of the American soldier, lifeless eyes stare down the sights of his weapon. In the background, we see the bent-over form of a woman, her back facing us. The extreme contrast seen in the two figures shows the absurdity of the incident itself. These works were made almost 60 years ago in the 1950s, in the middle of the post-war reconstruction and a time of great chaos in Japanese society. During that period, reportage painting was born. It was an attempt to go to the actual scenes of political and social unrest to research and record events as pictorial art. When Nakamura Hiroshi painted these works, he was in his mid-twenties. He used innovative methods incorporating socialist realism motifs in exaggerated perspective and montage theory techniques to create real, artistic worlds. Kazama Sachiko's various work, though the two artists are separated by a generational gap, seems to resonate with Nakamura's, created in an era which saw great changes in societal institutions and social values. Niwa Yoshinori, Proposing Holding Up Karl Marx to Japanese Communist Party Tossing Socialists in the Air in Romania Niwa Yoshinori's work tends to focus on activity in public spaces, using real society as an artistic partner, conceiving and realizing performances from an unusual perspective. He takes simple acts and entwines them with regular life in an alien way. By doing so, he asks fundamental questions about the knowledge and authority of society. The first video work can be seen on the two screens in front of you as you enter the room. The artist took a portrait of Karl Marx and asked various offices of the Japanese Communist Party to hang it up within their offices. The press bureau of the party's central committee, the committee offices of Chiyoda Ward and other wards around Tokyo, and even as far as the committee halls and offices of Nagoya and Sapporo cities. Marx was a German economist and revolutionary and was the founder of scientific socialism. His theories went on to become the guiding doctrine for socialism movements around the world, including the Russian Revolution, and even the Japanese Communist Party follows its principles as its mission statement clearly shows. 1. The Japanese Communist Party takes up our country's tradition of advancement and revolution. Amidst the intensifying struggles for liberation by the peoples of Japan and the rest of the world, the party was founded on the 5th of July, 1922, as a political party based in the theories of scientific socialism. Watch the video and see if the people of the Japanese Communist Party, founded more than 90 years ago, hang the picture of Marx on the walls of their offices. Yoshinori's work shows that by injecting foreign elements into what are ultimately normal habits and customs, in one stroke they begin to crumble. The video piece playing on the television was filmed in Romania, a country that from the end of World War II until 1989 was socialist under the authoritarian rule of the communists. This video piece is titled Tossing Socialists in the Air in Romania, and, as the name suggests, the work involves young people throwing socialist politicians and activists into the air in Romania, in the capital city of Bucharest. Even though the revolution is over, 
Romania is still feeling its after effects with a stagnant economy and increased unemployment. The video shows us young people living in that environment who know little of the revolution, lifting socialists into the air. The renounced past interlaces with the modern day, and we are able to grasp those intersecting realities as the charged emotions of that communist legacy meet the real words of the modern youth. Yanagi Yukinori, Eurasia, Inujima Project, Momoshima Project, Kosaki Jima Project. On the wall on the left, we see a great number of vibrantly colored national flags lined up, but the designs on the flags have been destroyed by ants tunneling through each one. The piece is titled Eurasia and is a part of Yanagi Yukinori's Ant Farm series. In the destruction of the eroding flags and the mixing of colors, the unique work gives visualization to the worldwide confusion regarding globalization and asks us about the true meaning of nation and national boundary. The series was first shown in New York in the late 1980s, and since then, on the international stage, Yanagi has continued to critique modern civilization's constant quest for economic efficiency and rationality. Next, we have the artist's records about the Inujima Project, a later project that has now run for more than 10 years, and about two projects on the islands of Momoshima and Kosagijima in Hiroshima Prefecture that derived from the Inujima Project. The concept behind the Inujima Project was born when the artist set eyes upon an abandoned refinery on the isolated island of Inujima in the Seto Inland Sea. Built in the early 20th century, it would have played a groundbreaking role in Japan's industrial development, but after only 10 years of operation, the refinery closed due to a crash in copper prices. The abandoned buildings serve as a symbol, a relic of modernization, and Yanagi has overlaid a thematic motif based on author Mishima Yukio, a man who warned about the perils of modernization. The project was a 13-year collaboration with architect Sambuichi Hiroshi, and it culminated in the now-open Inujima Seirensho Art Museum. Yanagi has put his hand to art from New York to the remote islands of Japan, and in his work we can see various structural contrasts, internationalism and regionalism, modernization and tradition, culture and nature. Endo Ichiro Model of Gopher Future Ship This yellow boat is called the Mirai E Maru, which could be roughly translated as the SS Gopher Future. The work here is a full-sized model of the boat, but the boat itself is still being built. In 2006, artist Endo Ichiro painted a car yellow, named it his Gopher Future Vehicle, and began traveling around the entire country. Endo calls himself a future artist, and to him, the future is not a far-off land of fantasy. He had many of the people he met at the places he traveled write their dreams on the side of the car, which then carried those dreams away with it. The Great East Japan Earthquake hit Japan in 2011, and Endo realized that the idea of looking forward towards the future had become even more important. He began the Rainbow Japan Project, in which he placed a GPS receiver in the Go for Future vehicles and traveled around Japan writing messages by using the signals from the GPS and overlaying his path onto maps. The Go for Future vehicles don't only carry people's dreams, they bring people together, sending a message out to the world. The first stage started out as a cry for people around the country to work together and the second stage was an attempt to pass on gratitude for the aid received from the world. Finally, in the third stage, the plan is to put out to sea on the Go for Future boat. Okumura Yuki, Takahashi Hisachika, from Wide White Space, Antwerp, 1967, to Project Room, Wheels Contemporary Art Center, Brussels, 2013. This next exhibit is the work of artist Okumura Yuki, but take a look at the photographs on the walls. These are images of the solo exhibition of the work of Takahashi Hisachika, a project planned by Okumura 
that traveled around Brussels earlier this year. Exactly why is Okumura displaying, as his own work, images of a solo show of the work of another artist? Okumura explains more about his encounter with the work of Takahashi Hisachika. Hi, this is Okumura Yuki. I am currently spending a year in Belgium, starting in February of this year. I was reading up on it before I left Japan. I read various books, and I found one thick one about an Antwerp gallery called Wide White Space that was open from 1966 to 1976. There was a list of the exhibitions held at the gallery, and there were two Japanese artists. One was Arakawa Shusaku, who's really famous, and the other was someone called Takahashi Hisachika, who, as far as I knew, wasn't famous at all. So, when I went to Belgium, I decided to do some research about him. On the desk on your right as you come through the entrance, you will find that thick book with the list of exhibitions held at the Wide White Space Gallery. When Okumura arrived in Antwerp, he met up with Annie de Decker, who ran the gallery in the past. We talked about a bunch of things. But she told me that there were no photographs remaining of Takahashi's exhibition. Anyway, when she told me there were no pictures, I was disappointed. But then she said that the actual paintings that were in the exhibition were still around. She showed me the paintings, and I realized how great they were. Since they still existed, I thought that this was a great chance to show them to people again. Someone told me that Takahashi was living in Paris, so I went to meet him. I told him that I wanted to take all the paintings Annie had in storage and take them on a traveling show around Brussels. I asked him if that was all right with him, and he said yes. He came to help out with the exhibition, giving the opening speech, so even he himself put a lot of work into it. One artist organizing a solo exhibition of the work by another artist. A dual structure is born from this, as one artist introduces the other and offers commentary about the second artist's work. I think it's less about producing the show and more just like normal curating. I planned it out and organized it. Maybe it sounds a bit far fetched. But it was kind of like I was being superimposed over Takahashi. I am in the same situation as he had been as a Japanese artist who had just arrived in Europe, with his work too. Pieces he'd made afterwards in New York are really close to pieces I'm making now. So, in that way too, it's like I'm superimposing myself over him. I was putting on his exhibition as my own project, and maybe it's the same now. But when we were doing the exhibition in Brussels, it was really ambiguous. I mean, exactly whose show was it? I think maybe I was interested in creating a situation where people wouldn't know who was who through superimposing me, Okamura Yuki, and Takahashi Hisachika. The exhibition statement that Okumura used at Brussels Wheels Contemporary Art Center is on display again here today. Brussels and Tokyo, Wheels Contemporary Art Center, and Mori Art Museum. Okumura has taken these long buried artworks and carried them across time and space, giving us all the chance to look upon layers upon layers of meaning. Tajima Mika, The Extras, Tokyo. At this, the fourth Roppongi Crossing exhibition, we also take a look at Japanese artists active overseas as well. In this exhibit, we look at the work of Tajima Mika, a Japanese American artist based in New York. This is the first time her work has been exhibited in Japan. Here, we see a series of works are on display on the long wall on the right. But on the left, as you walk down the hallway, you will see a wooden rack. Seemingly made to store paintings. This is, of course, a work by Tajima, but at the same time, the rack is also being used right now to store paintings from the Mori Art Museum collection by the great modernist architect Le Corbusier. The work is called The Extras, as both a reference to those actors in non speaking parts on film and in television, 
and to surplus items being stored in a warehouse until needed. Tanjima refers in her work to modernism in architecture and design at the same time as she questions the effect of the ideals of efficiency, progress, and lucidity on humanity and what we do. Le Corbusier's painting in the installation here functions partly as architecture, partly as an interchangeable surface, and partly as the image itself. Akira Akira, Spielberg Black, Desert Island. A black liquid like substance seems to have been spilled atop the display. The substance is actually made of polyurethane and normally used to paint automobiles, but in the way the light reflects off the surface, it seems even now as if it were about to flow. It is the work of Australia based artist Akira Akira. The work is titled Spielberg. If you continue to the left, you will find an installation piece by the same artist, made up of what looks like a small piece of stone. The theme of this piece is the artificial rocks made for use in aquariums. Here, Akira turns his attention to designing a production version of a natural object, then deliberately plays with the material and leaves his mark behind on the surface with craftsman like skill. Whether made by hand or ready made, his methods seem to evoke traditional Japanese flower arranging and garden design. He takes objects of various materials and forms and places them in an extremely delicate arrangement. Akira stresses the relationship of the entire arrangement and space, not only the individual objects, and perhaps this installation represents for him a sort of landscape. Simon Fujiwara, The Problem of History, The Problem of the Rock at the bottom of the escalator leading up to the entrance to Mori Art Museum, there is a large plaza. You may remember seeing a large stone with a little red child's hat on top as you crossed the plaza. You would have also seen a rock with children's handprints in red and yellow as soon as you entered the exhibition space, and in another room, another rock with a crutch sticking out of the top. These rocks are all a part of an art project by Simon Fujiwara, titled The Problem of the Rock, which was displayed in the spring of 2013 at the shrine known as Dazaifu Temangu on the island of Kyushu. Exactly what story do these works tell? Since the ancient past, the Japanese religion of Shinto has revolved around the worship of nature, of the so-called eight million gods of the stones, trees, mountains, seas, and winds. Dazaifu's Temangu asked Fujiwara to create a piece of art that would last a thousand years. Fujiwara was interested in the idea that, over a great length of time, the stones could take on various meanings and gradually become the target of faith. Please take a look at the monitor. In completing this project, Fujiwara did an incredible amount of research at sites connected to stone, from the caves of Argentina to the spas in Lourdes, France, and finally to the Stone of Anointing at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Throughout his travels, he thought about exactly how a piece of stone could become an object of belief for people. Faith, doubt, history, origins, problems, answers. Fujiwara tells an eloquent tale regarding stone of the fusion of fiction and reality through his research and intellectual transition. Kaneuji Teppe, Ghost in the Liquid Room, Lenticular, The Eternal. Please move around as you view this work on display. As your perspective changes, you can see the images in the photos that make up the work move and change themselves. The work is called Lenticular. To create the piece, the artist took a number of lenticular postcards and posters, which show images that change position as you move them, chopped them up into fragments, and attached back together into a 3D form. As you move around the piece, what you see changes. Artist Kaneuji Tepe's work is said to show a great consciousness of opposites as it wanders between 2D and 3D, between visible and invisible. Hello, my name is Kaneuji Tepe. My goal is to make complex dimensionality more visible. 
So, while the photos I use are glued onto a flat surface to make it look more three-dimensional, I add corners in various places by carving up the photos into geometric shapes. I think this is what gives it its more complex dimensionality. And that new functionality of moving around as you look at the work on display, that's the kind of work I wanted to create. Also, this time I think there's some vague imagery of tank-like structure or of a portable shrine. This piece functions through the application of light within a display space that is plunged suddenly through some catalyst into darkness. I use lenticular lenses and reflective sheets to let light touch upon and reflect within dark spaces. Under normal light, the piece doesn't function at all. So I wanted to put in an element that only functioned under conditions completely different from the normal display. And so I used the reflective sheets. I really wanted to add an element that evokes an image of conditions completely different than ones you're actually in right here, right now. Please take a look at the new work on the wall. The frame of the piece is made up of photos of liquids cut out from cosmetics and other advertisements. A wood grain pattern, just like a bare wall, can be seen within the frame. Using a frame to show not a regular piece of art, but to show nothing, it seems to ask us exactly which part of the display is the artwork and sets our perspective adrift. The images have become the frame and the part that should be on the outside as the background, the empty wooden image, is brought inside. In a way, it's all been reversed and every picture is made like that. I created this work with the thought that with inversion after inversion, with five of them together, the white of the walls would seem to be reversed the walls would seem to become more substantial. Recently, I've been thinking about how to create things that can't be seen and how to create pieces where the way you look at them will change when the conditions change. I've been really conscious of that kind of thing. For me, as I continue creating, I'm very conscious of how the value of a piece changes and how I have to stop thinking of putting focus on one thing. Using materials close at hand and by creating changing never-before-seen structures, Kaneuji asks us various philosophical questions about looking, recognizing, and feeling, and about what it means to be different or the same or to actually exist. Shitamichi Motoyuki, Remnants, ReFort Project 6. A semispherical building stands in the middle of an idyllic farmer's field. This oddly out of place object is a bunker that was built during World War II and designed to protect an aircraft from enemy fire. Artist Shitamichi Motoyuki was born in 1978. Ever since finding a World War II-era water tower and electrical transformer near his home, for his Remnants series, or Shape of War, Shitamichi took photographs of 73 war ruins around the country like this one, classifying and arranging as he went, and presenting each with drawings and commentary. Concrete installations were used to protect the coastlines from attack, there are buildings, gun batteries, and weapon testing grounds, and while some lie abandoned, now unused, some have been integrated into daily life by being readapted to serve a role in regular life or as space for storage. Shitamichi's eyes quietly grasp that distortion in time that surrounds the ruins and the landscape around them. Please move down the display. These works were used as part of the ReFort project, begun in 2004. The project is an attempt to not just understand the ruined buildings, but to give them new meaning. After working with other people to put a building to some use, it is then returned to its previous condition. His new work, ReFort Project 6, 
featured artists setting up easels and painting at a place in Aomori Prefecture called Tapi Misaki, which was used as an observation post. The wartime scenery and present day scenery seem to overlap. Nakahira Takuma, Untitled. Here, we take a look at a number of photographs taken over the period of a decade by Nakahira Takuma. Born in 1938, Nakahira was working as an editor at the magazine Gendai no Mei when, in the late 1960s, he began to take photographs and to work as a critic. With the publication of photography magazine Provoke in 1968, the photography world was rocked by the innovative techniques shown by Nakahira and his fellow photographers, techniques known as Are Bure Bokeh, or rough blurred out of focus. In 1970, Nakahira published the photo collection For a Language to Come, but later incinerated the photographs and negatives from that time. Nakahira explains what he was thinking. That was the beginning of the collapse of the modern concept that artists are the center of the world, or more specifically, that the world is me. From that, The inevitable conclusion was that I would try and undermine that artistic view that says that a piece of art is an expression of an image that an artist carries within. Nakahira afterwards began to question the relationship between the world and humanity. He said, By stacking photographs together and not limiting oneself to a single photograph, We show not a 2D conflict between the world and humanity, but maybe we become able to clarify an encompassed whole, the composition of the world in its entirety. These photographs seem to reflect the aesthetic world he described. Mitsuta Haruo, Enjaku, Yumei. Here we see crane flies placed atop a specimen bottle. If you look carefully, you can see that the entire piece is made of metal. Inorganic metal is given life and perched atop the specimen jar designed to hold the dead. Let's take a look at another piece. Here we see a Chinese windmill, a type of butterfly common in Asia, resting its wings atop a spider lily. Everything seems full of life. From the red on black patterned wings to the tiny joints. These pieces are a type of metalwork called Jizai Okimono. Jizai Okimono are realistic metal figurines of birds, snakes, and insects, and they even have freely articulating bodies and limbs, allowing the realism to extend even to the movement of each and every delicate joint. They were initially developed in the mid Edo period, and then they were exported in large numbers to great acclaim from customers overseas from the end of the shogunate into the late 19th century. Artist Mitsuta Haruo has taken the traditional craftsmanship of Jizai Okimono and helped it evolve, giving us another chance to think about the fundamental meaning of life and death. Suga Kishio Linked space. Arcs of wire connect lumps of cement arranged in a circle on the floor. The gentle overlapping arches are reminiscent of the cyclic continuity of the universe. Artist Suga Kishio is representative of the Japanese Monoha art movement. The Monoha sculptural movement began around 1970 in Japan. And its artists used soil, stone, trees, iron, cloth, and other substances, including the materials and their surroundings, to address the idea of mono or things, and creating works that had a relationship with the spaces around them. Suga's unique view of the world permeated all the work he has created over the last 40 years. In Suga's own words, I think that everything is already right in front of our eyes, and even though consciousness, thought, and perception can't be seen, I think they too are mono. Suga's idea of mono is an ideal that seems to cover everything in the known universe. It is not a debate between modern or early modern, 
or between west and east. Perhaps it is more that now there is a desire to find the perspectives and senses which come from incorporating everything. Reuben Kehan and Gabriel Ritter join us as guest curators, the first time we have invited curators from overseas to work in collaboration with Mori Art Museum's chief curator, Kataoka Mami, to create an exhibition of Japanese modern art from a global perspective. You will find the Project Fukushima space at the end of the exhibition. The project was launched by volunteers the summer after the nuclear accident in Fukushima and continued afterwards mainly in the city of Fukushima. Concrete, straightforward actions set in motion, continuing to question that which is fundamental, essential. The question seems focused upon everything we are. Mori Park lies within the property of Rapongi Hills, and there you will find an exhibit showing a work called Pavilion for Unexpected Guests, a work by art group Pro Minority, a collaboration between Iwata Sohei and the Santal tribe of India. The house shows a unique sensibility in response to the relationship between nature and humanity, and was built using a combination of modern techniques and the traditional mud wall construction techniques. Of the Santal people. Please take the chance to visit that exhibit today as well. If you would like to get even more enjoyment out of the Modi Art Museum's contemporary art exhibits, you are most welcome to join our membership program. Members can always attend our exhibitions for free and receive various other benefits, such as invitations to exhibition opening receptions, artist talks, and members only parties. Members also receive discounts on art catalogs and in the museum shop. If you would like to know more, please take a pamphlet from the stand near the exit of the exhibition. We would be very happy to have you as a member. Please feel free to contact us. Rapongi Crossing 2013 Out of Doubt Audio Guide Planning and Production Mori Art Museum Art and Part Narration Peter von Gom. Explanation Okumura Yuki, Kaneuji Teppe. Supervision Mori Art Museum.